I grew up in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I, I was paying for community college, and it wasn't much. It was like 800 bucks a semester, and to me, it was like, what a waste of my fucking money, you know? So I, I dropped out, and then I started working as a, a sign painter for Wegmans uh, in upstate New York. Sort of gourmet grocery store, and they were looking for someone to do hand-painted signs. I had all these like countless amounts of like paint markers and stuff at my disposal. So I would just come in and then I'd spend the rest of the day drawing friends tattoos too at the time. Like a lot of people were having friends be like, oh, Dan draws, you know, <laughs> like draw me that tree. Well, we've all been friends with Dan for a long time. I kind of always knew that eventually we would all, we would work together. You know, because he has the same ideas as all of us as far as what a tattoo should look like. You know, he, he really enjoys painting and, and creating, you know, new stuff. We, we don't want to keep pulling the same things out of the same books, but if we take those same things and, and repaint them ourselves, well, then it, it kind of does become a, a different thing. It becomes our own, you know? Well, it's, I say this is how we keep our skills sharp. You know, the flash at Smith Street, there's certain shops aesthetics, obviously, that we're, we're trying to emulate. The whole idea of it being crushed and flash is like, and that's a more uh, old school approach to a tattoo shop. Well, there's a shop, there was a shop in China called Swallow Tattoo. There's photos of this guy Swallow, he was a Chinese tattooer, standing in the shop. And I mean, everything is covered in flash. I mean, like the front of everything, little spots and like the side, like this little side of the fridge would have designs all down it. Everything is covered in flash. And I just think it's such a good look. I mean, obviously you're in a tattoo shop, you know? It should look like that, you know what I mean? I think that place, you know, is, a, is kind of exactly what we want Smith Street to look like. So that anywhere you turn, you see a tattoo design and then are still thinking about tattoos. Like tattoo heads get it, or they understand this is hand painted flash and that there's sort of a tattooing revival. But like regular people who just walk into the shop, like I think to them it's sort of run of the mill. And actually we get reggies in there sometimes and say that, you know, like, oh, this is all hand painted by the four of us and they can't even wrap their heads around it. Like, what do you mean? Like. You painted it? What do you mean you painted it? Like with a brush and paper. And they can't even fathom that, you know? This whole wall at this point is 100% us. Like this set, which actually turned out to be this entire row, Eli had done the first three. He had done the parrots, the eagles, and then I think the owls. So he was like these little triptychs of like three different birds. And then Steve kind of followed his lead, I think, first if I'm not mistaken, right? So then he did like these sets of pinups and then I followed, you know, and then, and then Bert and so on. You know, I did the roses, Bert did, did the uh, geishas and Eli did the crosses and then so on. And then eventually it was like, oh, we might as well just do the whole row. If you were actually here to see how much we talk and argue about where a sheet's gonna go, it's, it's just stupid. And then, and then, you know, and it lasts like that for a week until someone does another sheet and then everybody sits on the couch, stares at the wall and says, all right, what's, what's, what's going in next or where is this one going or whatever. I don't know of any other shops in New York that did all their own stuff. Aaron Coleman I know in Arizona, that shop's all their own hand painted stuff. And I think Blackheart has recently done a bunch of uh, flash for their shop as well. But I mean, it's, it's a pretty rare thing, really. And it's kind of funny when you think about it, you know, it's been so advantageous for us to have it. And it's been so fun to do it, you know, it's, it's really worked out. But not a lot of people do it, you know. It's one of those things, you know, tattooing goes through those stages, you know, it's sort of coming out of a real big custom only stage, you know, where it's getting back into people are realizing they can pick something off the wall and it, if somebody does happen to have the same design, it doesn't necessarily mean anything bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, like certain designs are just classic. Oh, I have to have something custom, you know, if it's on the wall, then it's very common and, you know, everybody has that. I want something that's unique, you know, but I mean, let's face it, the most unique tattoos are always the ones that suck the most, you know what I mean? Like the, the best tattoos are the ones you've seen a million times, you know, there's, there's strength in that crawling panther because 
you know it. Whether you have tattoos or have ever been in a tattoo shop, that has power. I think that it's recognizability, it's iconic. I think it's up to the tattooer to save the customer from themselves. In other words, like when I first got into tattoos and I knew nothing about them, I thought the ugliest shit was so cool, you know? People come in and they want something bad. It's kind of our job to say, hey, you know what? Like, we can give you something better. Or, you know, every other teenage girl comes in asking for that tattoo. You sure you want that? You have to sort of educate, otherwise you just come off like a dick. Like, you just like, no. You gotta tell them why the design won't work. You gotta explain to them what, what looks better. A lot of the customers hold on to it and they think about it and they apply that to their next tattoo. I think we want for our customers to stay focused on, on, on what they see in here, you know? Like, I don't really think there's one design in here that any of us would be upset with tattooing, you know? Well, actually, there's only, there's one. There's one design that we all hate in the shop. Dan loves it. The, the that band, that band design. It can be a little confusing and a little bit overwhelming to a reggae to come in there and see all that flash and then a lot of it looking very classic and then yes, there's like a sheet painted on cardboard. There's sheets in there and designs in there that obviously we think are amazing and they're very folksy or very simple and clunky or whatever and Dan's sheets are good examples of that. He does some really experimental, he manages to stay very traditional and very by the book but just completely off the wall at the same time. And, and imagery that you might not necessarily see on every tattoo sheet. When he gets a little more creative with it, they're very unique and very clever and very like well thought out. He's got one design, the Great Mother, it's like a crystal with a little person inside of it and it's so weird, I've never seen anything like it anywhere, but it's so smart, you know what I mean? Like the way he used color in it, the way some of the color doesn't go all the way up to the lines. Dan's much more studied in the folk arts than I am. He really enjoys folk art all across the board, most cultures. So I think he really knows how to make Tattoo Flash look like that, look like very genuine, like, like folk art. You know, we all buy obviously a lot of books and a lot of tattoo related books and Dan definitely brings in books that, you know, we don't expect that have great imagery in them that are not tattoo related at all. And I think it also it's that he's sort of searching those sources. Obviously the recycled imagery is we love and is powerful, but you know, we're also always constantly looking for one new design. I'd really like to talk about this. This is a drawing from the little Korean woman at the, the local bodega. She draws these things on the sides of cigarette cartons. I just think they're super cool, like, you know, this little old Korean woman that just peddles cigarettes and like a little piece of outsider art in Carroll Gardens that a lot of people don't even pay attention to. I actually wouldn't mind turning that into a sheet of flash at some point. Dan's process is more, I think, where he, he won't come to us with it. He'll start it or finish it and then present it to us. I think it was last summer he started just doing these these really loose, super kind of folk art style paintings that were totally different for all of us. None of us had ever really tried to do anything like that before. And I, I think he really kind of like blew us all away with that, you know, like just from him doing that, it kind of like helped all of us to do things a little bit looser. The paper wasn't even really like watercolor paper. It was just some really weird junk that I, I would have never even thought to paint on it. I don't want to be too cliche and say like I realized that I didn't really have to follow rules, but yeah, I mean, kind of once I painted on cardboard, I think everybody at the shop was kind of like, what the fuck? Why are you wasting your time? You're like, you know what I mean? Like, because this is something you do when you're on the phone, but you don't spend eight hours on a painting of it, you know? So I did it and everybody's like, wow, that actually looks really cool. I'm also really influenced by old game boards, you know, really naively painted game boards that were, you know, something that people just would have done at home. Um, this one is, I love the birds, and I was just thinking about Sweetheart of the Rodeo. So it just kind of has like a lot of the themes that I think go with real Americana painting. It's funny because tattooing kind of desensitizes you to anything other than painting for the sake of painting. You know what I mean? So a lot of these things are just all the things that give me 
a certain feeling. How sick are those things? Really off the wall, but so cool, right? Like, yeah. and he doesn't really seem to be, he doesn't really like let them hang around or show you, you know? He does them and then he takes them home. They're awesome, they're so different. And I think that you could probably see those somewhere out of context and not even think about tattoos or that a tattooer did them.